Okay, hello everyone. Um, my name is Faith. If you do not know me, I'm the marketing coordinator here at Shapers and Dean. Um, and we wanna welcome you to our September Business Builder. We thank you for being here. We know you're busy, so we really appreciate you giving us your time. Uh, to make the most of your time, we encourage you to ask questions and participate by utilizing the chat box. Thank you, Faith. I'm Doug Dean. I'm the owner and managing partner at Schaefritz and Dean. One of the things that I'm proud about at our firm is that we find ways to give back to the real estate agent community that we serve. And one thing that we started this year, back in January of this year, when we were still in COVID, was the Business Builder Speaker Series. The third Wednesday every month, we bring a speaker who's going to have some great content to help you, the real estate agent. And uh, we're just delighted to have somebody uh, as wonderful as Peter this week. Um, go ahead, Faith. Um, so before I introduce Peter, I want to let you all know about our October Business Builder, which we are very excited about. Um, thank you to Denny Faircloth, uh, Peter's business partner for the suggestion, Casey and Anissa Darnell with Truth & Co Interior Design um, will be joining us and they will be talking about interior design, staging tips, and kind of how they combine their two greatest passions design uh, to create their uh, very successful interior design business. Uh, so we are very excited to have them and that will be October 20th at 1 p.m. That's um, right, the third Wednesday each month, which October will be Wednesday, October 20th at 1 p.m. Go ahead, Faith. Oh, no, you can go ahead. And then we want to welcome our friend and the founder and host of Real Estate Connections, Peter Pasternak. Take it away, Peter. Thank you. I'm going to make you the host. Okay. Give me a second here. Okay. Awesome. Well, first of all, um, I want to welcome everybody. And I have a request. See, in this world of Zoom, it is challenging when I take a look and I can't see your face. So if you can, can you please turn your video on? You know, in a live event, I can see everybody, I can feel that energy, and I can tell you there's nothing more challenging when all you've got are these blank screens and you can't figure out if anybody even knows what you're saying. So that would be really helpful to me. So first of all, thank you, Doug. Thank you, Faith, for inviting me to come. Um, today, I'm gonna talk about like one of my favorite topics. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, Wendell King. Uh, yeah, I apologize. I'm going to go ahead and uh, mute King. everybody except Peter. And uh, right Peter, you, you may have to unmute yourself. Good, 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 good. I'm going to yeah, reclaim I know, uh, We are connected on Saturday and everything. Okay. Thank you, Doug. I appreciate that. Yeah, you, sometimes you're talking and you hear these voices. <laughs> I go, where are those voices coming from? Is it in my own head or is it uh, actually happening? But uh, again, thank you so much, Faith and Doug, for having me here. All right, so I've got a question here. How many people realize that their database equals money? If you do, raise your hand. Yes? Okay, good. I'm in the same place. I truly believe that too. And so if you believe that, then every day that ends, oh, I like that raised hand down there. Uh, every day that ends in a Y, then you should be doing something to go ahead and you know, work on increasing your database, right? And so uh, I am fortunate to have over 40, thousand people in my database. I said 40,000 people are in my database. And um, I'm going to teach you today the two ways that I have gotten my database to over 40,000 people. Uh, we're going to talk about networking, the do's and the don'ts, uh, the objectives you, I recommend you have at a networking event. And then um, I'm going to show you how I've used LinkedIn to go ahead and increase my database. So I always like to ask this question. So um, let's see. Oh, Evie's there and stuff. Oh my goodness. Evie, unmute yourself. I'm going to play with you here for a minute or two. There she, 
I said I knew Evie would be like, you know, the play. So I met Evie, the last real estate connections, and I love her energy. And she had such a great smile. She is a lender with U.S. Mortgage and just really a, a nice person. Okay, so Evie, you're yeah. going to a networking event. When you go, do you have some kind of goal when uh, you go to the event? I do. Great. And tell me what your goal is. I try to meet people in all the various real estate disciplines that I feel like might be good for my sphere of influence. And then I also think about how I can help them with the people that I already have in my database and in my network. All right, Evie, do I have permission to have a mentoring moment with you? Yes. So I always ask, I never assume. Okay, now, I want you to keep this in mind. Sure. If your, what you think your goal is, is not measurable and by when, it's not a goal, it's a wish. Okay. Okay. So now let's take a look. Let's go back to what you said, understanding that because at the end of the night or end of whatever, you want to be able to see how you did. And so okay. if, see, if you say something like, hey, I just want to meet people and th there's no way of like really tracking whether that was successful or not. So let's tweak a little bit. And now, you know, measurable and having that. Let's the, the next, when you go to real estate connections next time, what would your goal be? <laughs> well, I, I actually keep track of who I meet and I come back and I put them in a database with their picture. Yep. And then I try to reach out and make a connection. So I guess in that way, for me, it was measurable. Um, okay. Okay. So I think you just need to add to one thing that would make okay. it measurable. Give me a number of people. So okay. you go, how many people do you want to meet? Oh. If you say everybody, there's no way you might no, miss one. No, I try. Uh, last event, I met 25. And I felt like that was good because you have to disengage and move around and you know, walk up with me. And awesome. I was new and I didn't know the way of the land yet. So. Okay, awesome. So see, I'm a very goal oriented person, right? And so, and to do that has to be measurable. So let me just tell you what my goal is when I go to networking event. Okay. So my goal is to meet three to five people that I'm going to follow up for a coffee or one-on-one -on -one meeting. Okay. See, I believe the biggest mistake that most people make at a networking event is they throw up on people. Now, I say that first time, I'm like, what did you just say? Okay, it's visual, but I want you to hear what I'm saying. See, there are people that go and they're just like, hey, I just want to go. And they just give their, like, their business cards to everybody. Don't engage, don't communicate, and all they do. And here's what we know. People do business with people that they know, like, and trust so if you go to an event and you're just giving cards like you haven't built that relationship with people right so doug has heard me say this about a hundred times when he's heard me this presentation my favorite book on networking is the seven levels of communication by michael Mir. seven levels of communication by michael Mir. doug you do me a favor and put that in the chat that seven levels of communication now my favorite part in that book is there's a pyramid from least effective to most effective forms of communication. Now, I'm going to connect dots here. The most um, effective way of communicating is a one-on-one -on -one meeting, okay? Number two is networking events, okay? One is a one-on-one. -on -one. Number two is a networking event. So if you understand that, you realize that the networking event is a funnel for that one-on-one. -on -one. All right, everybody know when I say funnel, what I mean, it's kind of like the bridge, right? So you're going there. So the network event is not the finish line. It's what gets you to that one-on-one. -on -one. So uh, Evie, because you're doing such a great job playing with me, I'm going to continue here. We're at Real Estate Connections and you know that my goal is to get a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, here is the conversation that I would have. Oh my God, Evie, can you believe how crazy number of people here? It is so loud. Listen, Evie, I'm going to call you tomorrow. Side note, if I say I'm going to call tomorrow, when am I going to call? Tomorrow. And if I don't mean it, don't say it. It's the first time somebody's going to see if you do what you say you're going to do. Okay, I'm going to call you tomorrow. Now listen to these words carefully. To set up a time for us to meet for coffee to see how we can help 
one another. Evie, what did you just hear me say? I, a lot of things. A, you're engaging with me one-on-one, -on -one, which is something I haven't been doing. Two, you're uh, telling me that we're going to help one another and we're going to spend time FaceTime to get to know one another. Perfect. Now, I, before the pandemic, I used to do a hundred one-on-ones a month. Now, let that sink in. Now, I'm back to about 25 a month. Do you know what most people hear? And you got that right. I said, we're going to help one another. What most people hear is that I'm going to help you. Now, I didn't say that. Now, that's the byproduct. But here's the thing. There's nobody, even including the one and only Doug Dean, nobody is going to get 100% of people that are going to meet you. So what you're trying to do is to increase your odds that people are going to meet with you, right? Because why are we meeting with people? To increase our database, to increase our number of relationships. So anything that can get you to that is helpful. See, Dagmar, we go back a long way. I love seeing your smiling face. Good to see you. If you believe, and I know so many people reach out to you. If you think that there's going to be some benefit of a meeting with someone, are your chances high or lower that you make time to meet with them? Higher, of course, right? So you understand that uh, the wording is important. If you just say, I want to meet, the person goes, what the heck are we going to talk? Like, like, what's the purpose of this? We're all busy. So there's got to be something that catches them, right? And so that ability that there's something in it for them, again, nobody's going to get 100%, but you want as many people to meet with you as possible. Everybody with me so far? Okay. Now, I always say it is more important to be interested than interesting. Evie, if I'm interested, who's my focus on, me or you? Me. And if I'm interesting, my focus is on who? You. If you want to forge relationships with people, you have to make it about them. So how many times when you meet someone, they're a great connector, and the place is busy, and you say, you know, when I was talking to Doug, I felt like I was the only person in the room. Right, that's a gift. When people feel as though you're really focused on who they are, okay? All right, now, now comes the time to have our one-on-one. -on -one. Now, see, a lot of people get stuck here. Now, I love one-on-ones because it's an opportunity to learn more about that person. Now, I always talk about you are either in your head or your heart. Joy lives in your heart. Okay, now, have you ever met someone and you're like, this is a big fish. You know, it's a big, it's a big realtor, it's a big attorney, whatever it is. And you're like, I want them to think I'm the best thing since sliced bread. You know, I want them to think I'm the most intelligent person. They're gonna think, oh my God, how did I go all this time without meeting this person? So the problem is if you do that and you don't have a plan, you're in your head the whole time. What am I going to say? See, when I meet and have a one-on-one, -on -one, no matter who you are, I ask the exact same three questions. And the reason I do that is I don't have to sit there wondering what the heck am I going to ask you? Because I ask everybody the same questions. All right, now. When I have a one-on-one, -on -one, and, and anybody who has it knows, I have my, uh, I live here in Sandy Springs. We have a, a Dunkin' Donuts on Roswell Road in Sandy Springs. Why? Because they know me there. I remember before the pandemic, I went in for one-on-one, -on -one and the, um, the lady behind the counter said, that person took your seat. Should we tell them to move? I said, no, I'm sitting somewhere else today. But say, you want the person with the restaurant, I think, to like know who you are, right? Okay, so... When I have a one-on-one, -on -one, I always make sure I start the conversation because I am trying to build the relationship. See, if you didn't know me and I say I'm going to meet you and I want to see how we can help one another, I, start, I sit down and you still think I'm trying to sell you something, right? Like, like why did he really want to have coffee with me? So, you know, their hands are folded. They're like disengaged. 
But see, when I show interest in them, you know what happens? It's like they start moving closer to you. You can tell from their uh, body language that like, you know, all of a sudden this is getting a, like a better experience because I'm showing interest in them. Okay, now here are the three questions I ask everybody, even since you're doing such a great job, do you mind continuing playing, role playing with me here? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna give you the questions and answer them like if we were having coffee right now. Now, let me just say this, like, and I get this question asked a lot. What happens like if this goes from like a business meeting to like a therapy session? Have you ever gone like that? You felt like, oh my God, this like, I'm not the like psychiatrist here and stuff. So I don't let things get off track. So if I start meeting with someone and it becomes like too personal instead of, I'd say something like this, you know what, Dagmar, that is a great question, but you know what, today, I really want to find out how we can help each other. So do you mind if we just kind of like go through uh, that discussion? And most people like, they get it, you know, without like, like I'm not Danny, like I love Denny. Denny is so direct. I mean, like he says stuff that I'm like, I get embarrassed and I turn red and it's not of what he's saying it's just he's younger and it's just i come from a thing where some that's just not good taste i just wouldn't say it but you know that's a good thing there is a type of personality for everybody there's not a right or wrong i'm just a little bit more i think genteel but that's because i'm 61 years old and that comes from a little bit <clears throat> of experience all right evie back to you we're sitting there having coffee you know and i'd be like evie let me ask you this and so when i ask these let's interact what are your goals for the next 12 months? <laughs> well, I'm gonna ask you, are we speaking business or personal? I'm gonna kind of come in on that. So I say, yeah, see, I don't have a preconceived notion. You can, I didn't say business, I am personal. Okay. People give me both, it's up to you. Okay. So my, my business goal is to grow my um, network of friends and business associates to grow my business, my mortgage business. I'm also a licensed real estate agent working with investors. So I'm interested in meeting people that move in that world and seeing if we can develop relationships to help uh, each other grow our businesses. Okay, so I need one tweak. Sure. So here's, I need you to make it measurable. Because the goal, if I just say, hey, I'm just want to basically, I want to meet people and grow my business, that's great. But by like how much? Because like if it's a month, three months, six months, and you're trying to like tweak and stuff, it's too hard to say, I want to meet. And I don't know like what that is. So I want, I like it more goal oriented. So let's take that just at a little number. And, and I think it will sound really good. Number of people that I'd like to meet? Either people or percent you want to grow your business, what, whatever that is for you. So I would probably quantify it more to people because okay. it's, I have two different sides of the street I'm working on. So okay. I'd like over the course of the remainder of this year to meet, you know, 10 really connected individuals that, that want to grow their businesses and that feel like we can um, build a relationship and help one another do that. Okay. I love it. Uh, question, Evie. When you put a number in, did it feel different to you? Like, you know, it did. It okay. narrowed the world down. <laughs> like, and do you know the reason why most people don't like to put a number on it? I don't think most people, uh, we kind of have a vague idea about networking. It's, uh, it's a little harder now, and, mm -hmm. I, and I get why you do that. Plus, I just made you feel special. This yeah. is going to be one of my 10. Yeah. So the reason most people will not quantify, is they don't want to be held accountable. Oh, okay. Well. Okay. Now, so e Evie, if I heard you correctly, your goal is to meet basically 10 quality people in order to increase and build your business. Correct. Um, the one that says maximum one gains bill. Can you unmute yourself? What's your name? Hey, it's Crystal Matheson. Hi, Crystal. Crystal, did you see what I just did with Evie? Yes. What did I do? Well, you were working on making her narrow it down to a number so that she could be more goal oriented, because when you put that number in there, then you're striving more for that as opposed to, well, maybe it would just be a few people here and there. And you're like, oh, well, I got a few, but 
I didn't meet that goal. Awesome. Okay. And then what did I do after that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay. What I did is I repeated her okay. goal. Okay. 10 people and stuff. And why did I do that? Because I want her to hear that I was listening to her. Right. Because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to build that relationship, right? So if I'm paying attention, I'm showing interest, it's going to go better. Got it. Okay. All right. So now we're on question two. And when I'm done with the third one, um, I will repeat them for everybody again. All right. So Evie, what do you think your biggest challenge is going to be to meet 10 quality people to grow your business? I will tell you exactly what it is. Hours in the day, scheduling around doing the work and then making opportunities to build and increase your pipeline. Okay. So really your biggest challenge is really kind of scheduling and kind of like a time to make right. that happen. Right. Okay. Evie, how can I help you? <laughs> You're already helping me. <laughs> um, are we speaking as if you're having coffee with me? hundred percent. Okay. I uh, would love it if you could connect me with people that you feel like might be, you know, the quality uh, individual that I'm looking for. Um, also, I would like to know a little bit more about your business and what your goals are so I can help connect from my sphere of influence to see if we can lift one another up. Okay, awesome. All right, now let me repeat the three questions here. Question one is, what are your goals for the next 12 months? Question two is, what's your biggest challenge? And number three is, how can I help you? Now, <clears throat> I have had the privilege of mentoring and coaching a lot of people. You have got to ask these questions in those in the same order I gave it to you. And here's the reason why. Most of the time what happens in that coffee of that one-on-one -on -one after you do that is that person is then going to ask you the exact same three questions. But even if they don't, over 95% of the time, they're going to ask you the last question you ask them. Evie, what was the last question I asked? How can I help you? How can I help you? So here's the truth. When you meet with someone, you want them to know what you do. But see, here's the difference. If you start that meeting and you make it about me, 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 and I need this, you haven't paved that relationship. Evie, let me just ask you this. When I ask you those three questions, and, and I'm really intently looking at you now, the computer may not, it's a little bit harder, but if I was in front of you, trust me, you're on my computer, I'm looking at your eyes and face right now. How did that make you feel? Like you were really interested in me. Yeah. And when you, somebody is interested in you, normally what happens is now you show interest in them. So if you ask those questions first and then they ask you, now you have an opportunity to say what that looks like to you. But it's not what you say, it's the order in which you do this. You know, I have this discussion with, with people like every day about the value of relationships and then nurturing relationships. It's not just getting them, it's then the nurturing of these relationships. And so you've got to do what you can do in order to make them feel comfortable, make them feel valued so that they really do show interest in you. All right. So before I get into the the time, uh, so the time frame, I 30 minutes is what I give to people. Now, I'm going out of order. I didn't take a look to see if I had other questions, but let me just tell you how I do appointments. Okay, I stack appointments. So let's say I block out three hours, okay? If I'm doing 30 minutes, that means I have six appointments. What I, my goal is, is let's say I, my first appointment's Evie. She's a lender. Who is she looking to meet? A realtor. I'm trying to fill my second slot with a realtor. Then I get to the realtor. What, do, what might I know about them? Now, I'm going to go on LinkedIn. I'm going to some different things. Like, I never go and meet someone and just meet them. I look at their social media. I take a look at certain things so that I'm prepared. Like, back when people were like my age and you went looking for a job, you wouldn't think about going to an interview without knowing a little bit about the company and, you know, what they were doing because you want to ask intelligent questions. 
So why would you today go and meet someone to just meet them? See, the point is, if you haven't done your homework, you haven't valued their time. So, you know, I'm, I'm always trying to figure that out. So I'm, I'm trying to uh, introduce the person afterwards of somebody that they could do business with. That's what I do at Real Estate Connections, right? I'm trying to put people together. And let me tell you, there's an art to it. See, if I introduce Evie to a realtor and they kind of exchange cards, what do you think, Evie? What would, if you, I introduced you to a realtor at the coffee, what would you think? Was it worth your time to come meet me for coffee? Absolutely. Then I do, okay, what can I do for the realtor? So it's always about providing value to others. See, anybody that knows me knows I, I don't expect anything in return when I help somebody. But here's what I find. The more that I help others, karma, universe, God, whatever that is for you, the more like, like I'm, I'm just like showered with great opportunities. But it's never one-on-one. -on -one. And so I do think people get in trouble when they meet somebody, they ask them that, and then they expect something and don't even say what they expect. See, if I did that with Evie and uh, I'm like, okay, in my head, hey, I've introduced her two people. She owes me a person. See, that's just about scarcity. That isn't fair. And if you felt that way, you need to share to someone what it is you expect. Don't expect somebody to read your mind. Okay. All right. Any other questions before I go into LinkedIn? Everybody getting something out of it? You know, I can't tell. Is anybody falling asleep here? Or is everybody go, yes, this is some good information. Can I have a thumbs up if you're having a good time and you're learning something here? Okay, good. Just making sure I'm in the right place. All right. So now I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to go into LinkedIn. Okay, can everybody see my LinkedIn? Can you give me a thumbs up? Can you see as I've shared my screen? Yes, okay. Now, if I asked everybody, um, how often are you on Facebook every day? Now, I can't see everybody because I'm sharing my screen here. I would expect that most people are on Facebook every day. Okay. Now, if I ask the same question about LinkedIn, I guarantee you it'd be a lot less than on LinkedIn. But here's what I know. LinkedIn is the number one social media for business. I actually spend more time on LinkedIn than I do on Facebook. Now, I'm going to show you some things that I have used to really increase my database. And again, if you've got questions, feel free to write them down, although I can't see. So Doug, if they put something or you feel comfortable, you unmute yourself if you have some questions when I'm going through here in LinkedIn. Okay. Just real quick, Peter, we did have a question. Was there a time frame you allocate for the one-to-ones? And I think I heard you say 30 minutes, like yes. you talked about stacking them. Three hours would give you six half-hour meetings. Yes. And listen, your first meeting should not be more than 30 minutes. Because then you're getting off base. And if you're really trying to meet a lot of people, you can have a second meeting or a third meeting on there. So that's uh, no more than 30 minutes. And if somebody's late, guess what? That's, it, it can happen sometimes. You still get 30 minutes. I'd say be on time the next time. Okay. All right. Now, You've heard me say I have 40,000 people in my database. So here is something that you can do in LinkedIn that 99% of the time you cannot do in Facebook. So I'm going to put the name Doug Dean in here because I know we're connected. Now, if I would ever learn how to type, I'd be really dangerous. Uh, my, oh, there we go, Douglas. How can it be number two on, on there? That can't be. All right, so let me do somebody else because I, that, I can't do what I wanted to do on there. I'm going to do something else. Let me do Danny. Okay. Does everybody see when you see this number here, it's a one. Everybody see that number there? See, a one means that we are directly connected on LinkedIn. So if Denny's connected to Doug and I'm not, Doug is a two. 
If Doug is connected to Evie and I'm not, she's a three. It only is a one, two, or three. Here's the power of a one. When, when you're connected one and you hit contact information, you see what I have here? I have his email. Anybody wanna guess what I do with that email? I copy and paste and put it in my database. Now, if you get nothing more today, then you can copy and paste and get these in your database. It's powerful. Facebook used to be that way. Now with like the settings, uh, less than like 1% have changed your settings that you get that. All right, now, the first thing that you, if you have LinkedIn or you don't have LinkedIn is you have to know how many people you're connected to. So if I go to my network up here, can everybody see how many connections I have? on LinkedIn, 10,647. So 10,647 of my 40,000 are from LinkedIn in my database. All right, now, you need your first goal, and I'm gonna show you how to do this, is you need to have 500 people that you're connected to, why? See, if I'm connected to Doug and he has 499, when I pull this up, it tells me Doug has 499. If I have 500 or 10,647, it says 500 plus. So most people are not gonna count <laughs> how many people, although they could. And so when you have 500 plus, it's a great way of showing that you use this, okay? Now, I would say one of the most valuable things that I use on LinkedIn that most people don't even know about is groups. So let me show you, everybody see these little dots here over that I've got my arrow. If I hit that, oh, wait a minute, sorry about that. I gotta hit the this here down here, oops, uh, wait a second. Got to try and move something here. My pictures are blocking me here. All right, let me try this again on there. Okay. Okay, you see I've got groups over here. Everybody see that? If I hit groups, you can join up to 50 groups. Okay, now, you remember I said your first goal should be to get to 500 people? Oh my God, I see my favorite group on LinkedIn. Real Estate Connections, oh my God, who would have thought that that was on here? Now, Evie, how many people, can you see how many members are in the Real Estate Connection group here on LinkedIn? 4,163. Now, I am not great at math. What number is bigger, 500 or 4,163? So, <laughs> all right, so let's do this. Let's go to the group. And I would tell you, I would never join a group that has like 50 or 60 people because you are limited to the number of groups you can join, it's 50. And remember, I can use this to get to my 500 plus. All right, so if I want to see the 4,163, I go to my see all. And you see what happens? If I went to all of these, it's got the name of the people. So Evie, let's just talk about you. You're a lender here. You're trying to connect with realtors. If you had the time and wanted to, you could go through this group and find all the realtors and connect a message with them. All right, now, if you know me, you know I'm very process oriented and I have a way of doing things. So, <clears throat> If you've been on LinkedIn, you know there's sometimes you get these um, requests and you're like, who the heck is that person? So here's what I do. Now, I when I'm using LinkedIn, I'm on my regular computer, my laptop. If you're on your phone, you're not able to put a message on this. You see how if I want to join, I have this message here. 
I can message you. So I'm, I'm old fashioned, I like to do that. So if I try to connect, I hit the connect button and then I put the message, uh, hey Faith, we're both members of the group Real Estate Connections. The reason I do that is I'm telling them we're in a group. They don't think I'm some random person just trying to stalk them, okay? We're either in this group or it could be, hey, you know how they have that thing that they have um, people they recommend that you connect with? Hey, we have 72 mutual connections. I'm basically letting them know there's, there's some reason and, and some common people that we know, okay? So, hey, we're both members of the group Real Estate Connections. I send you a request. I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one to see how we can help one another, okay? Now, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get to connect because once I connect, what do I do? I copy and paste and put them on my database, okay? Now they connect or they accept my uh, connection. Am I done with them? No. Now it would look like Evie. Thank you for accepting my request to connect. Side note. That's good manners. If somebody does something you want, I come from a generation, you thank them and acknowledge that, okay? So I thank you for connecting with me. I'd love to grab a cup of coffee to see how we can help one another. See, I always find it interesting when people are new or even if people have been doing this a while, whether they're a realtor, a lender, an attorney. And like, I think I ran out of people to talk to, seriously. If you just stayed in Real Estate Connection Group, there's 40, almost 4,200 people. Can you imagine if you reached out and tried to have coffee with all of them? You think you'd be pretty like full? Now, you have to be careful because I don't, Doug, you heard me say this. I don't want you to say I went through all 4,200 that one day and I asked them to connect. There's a limit to how many people you can do that to in a day. It's 100. And it's 100 in total. You can't do 100 in Real Estate Connection Group and, you know, Atlanta Realtors or anything like that. It's 100. All right. Now, if you go over that, you're going to get kicked out of LinkedIn. Anybody want to guess if I've ever was kicked out of LinkedIn? Yes, I was. But here's the thing. Luckily, it was only for 24 hours. I didn't know there was a limit when I first started this on here. All right. Now, here's the other thing I really like about LinkedIn. And that is that let's say, let's say you're a realtor and let's say like you're looking for like a certain area. So you can put all these filters. So I can go to, uh, let me get back to home. So let's say um, I was a realtor and I was interested like in new construction. Okay. So let's say I'm going to try this. I have another Atlanta uh, Realtors. Oh, uh, let's try new construction. Okay, so notice you've got see all the people. So if I went to that, twenty seven hundred people come up. So it's like a Google search. You have to sometimes like like. Figure out, sometimes you get too many, sometimes you didn't. But let's say I want to do instead of people, when I, get, I want to go and see the groups. All right, there's nothing in the groups. Let's, let me try this for the groups. Let's say I put um, Atlanta investors, real estate investors. Anybody like dealing with investors? I know you said Atlanta. Um, yeah, let me try this. Atlanta real estate investors okay i do my search and let's say i'm looking for any groups so i go to groups up here now see i got 28 groups atlanta real estate professionals all these other things so you can do searches to join groups it's absolutely one of the most powerful things in linkedin is groups so you're looking for a demographic you know you're looking for an area it's a great way of doing that. Now, let's not forget why are we trying to connect with people. It's we're trying to grow our database. Understanding your database is important in your success. People do business with people they know, like, and trust. 
Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to uh, say one more thing, and then I'm going to take questions because I could say all day and teach you stuff here on LinkedIn, but I don't have all days. So I've got a two o'clock Zoom I've got to get on. So here's the next question I get asked. Peter, do you accept every LinkedIn request you get? And I answer that. I only accept, or if you're a realtor, you ask me that. I would say only accept requests of people that you're willing to uh, help them buy or sell a property, which means I accept everyone. But let me be clear. <clears throat> you can always delete people or you can um, kind of ban them. So the one thing I personally don't like is like if I send you a request and we become friends and the first thing I get spam, you're trying to sell me something. So that's not somebody to me that's trying to provide value. I don't like that on there. And again, you're going to have some people that, you know, um, they're not really interested in getting to know you. It's more of a sales pitch. And again, I'm just giving you what, I'm, what I like to do or I don't. So with that, I am going to stop my share so I can come back and see everybody's nice faces here. So let me summarize a couple of things and then I want to open this up to some questions. Okay, understanding your database equals money. You all right, understand that. And, and it's really about forging relationships. The two ways that I do have done that to get to 40,000 people are one, our networking events, and second is LinkedIn. Okay. And how I show, it's important to show value to people. You understand that the networking event is the funnel to the one-on-ones. I am just huge. I'm a belly-to-belly -belly kind of person on here, right? So um, whether it's LinkedIn or whether it's you know a networking event, I'm trying to get a one-on-one -on -one meeting. And people still aren't comfortable, more are. You can say it's a Zoom code, but whatever, whatever that looks like to you where you're gonna go and meet these people. I ask everybody the exact same three questions. What are your goals for the next 12 months? What's your biggest challenge? How can I help you? So with that, I've got, we've got about 10 plus minutes. Let me just open it up. And Doug, I don't know if there were any questions in the chat when I was doing that, but uh, if so, great. If not, feel, to, I'm free, feel free to unmute yourself and I'm happy to answer any questions. You're free to unmute yourself. So go ahead and stump the professor, throw Peter a question. Peter, this is Dagmar. Hey, Dagmar. Uh, how do you follow up with all 10,000 of your clients? And what do you do when they, um, we send emails on regular basis to our database and I have about 10,900 people. Out of that, we send a gift to maybe a couple thousand of them. And then how do you deal with when they unsubscribe because they, want, they don't want you to send them things? Do you totally delete them out of your database or do you stay in contact with them in some other way? So first of all, I love that question. You know, I send out, so I'm sending out things through constant contact a couple of times a month because I have, I have events um, and, you know, I, I, I want people to be there. I don't take anything personally. Let me just tell you a couple of times when people unsubscribe, um, I find that they're at a different place and their email has changed. So sometimes it's not them, it's actually through whoever you're using that source. So that's that's the first thing. The second thing, it could be that it's no longer, they might be doing something different. Um, so I, while I can't send to them in constant contact, I still keep them in my outlook because I still might want their phone number, right? So if I delete it, I'm like, I worked that hard and I might've gotten their, their stuff with that. So that's the first thing. The second part is, um, is how do I stay in contact? So for me, one of the things that I do every day is I send out 25 texts randomly. And it will look something like this. Hey, Dagmar, I was just thinking about you today and I want you to know how much I appreciate and value our friendship. Please let me know if there's anything I can do for you. And I have to tell you how amazing, like some of the conversations, then they're like gonna call me. You know, I, here's what I find. 
younger people, this is a generalization, love to 